It's been a good day. I enjoyed the service this morning. And uh, then we went to the Green High School concert this afternoon. And uh, Travis is doing a wonderful job with uh, those children. We heard the fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, and then the combined eighth grade through high school. And it was just a, uh, wonderful to see where the kids uh, started and where they are now as seniors. So thank the Lord. Uh, it was refreshing when I was in the lobby. Uh, in came uh, quite a few people and some of them from Oregon. But they are Buckeyes. <laughs> Went back to my uh, office and uh, we had a little fellowship back there. It's a delight to have you folk. They'll be leaving, uh, flying back Tuesday and we pray the Lord gets you back there safely. We're delighted to have you with us tonight. I'm delighted to have you. And those of you that may be on Facebook or YouTube, uh, we want to be a blessing to you, and uh, we'd love to have you come. This is a good uh, Sunday night uh, crowd. I thank the Lord for people that, uh, that love the Lord and love to get out and uh, uh, be in church. I've been in church most of my life. Matter of fact, if I, if I wasn't in church, I don't, know, I don't know what I would do. It's just... Uh, church is important. Amen. I, I can't get at home when I get in church. Um, open your Bible, please, to the book of Matthew, chapter 1. We'll read several verses. But I want to preach uh, a message tonight uh, entitled, um, A Meaningful Christmas, a meaningful Christmas. When you found Matthew one twenty three, would you stand for the reading of the Word of God and remain standing for prayer? Matthew chapter 1, verse 23 says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Which being interpreted is God with us. Did you catch that? God with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, what a delight to open your word and, Lord, to be in church this evening. Lord, I pray that you would give me something and give our folk and visitors something for coming this distance, for coming into the house of the Lord. It's not a, a sacrifice to come to church. It is a, a blessing to come to church. Lord, I pray you'll help us tonight to understand the real meaning of Christmas. And Lord, that we might be excited about the things that matter around Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for standing. If you're like me, if you want to find out some answers, sometimes you go on the computer or go use your cell phone and go on Google. And I was just uh, kind of interested in what the world thinks that uh, Christmas is is and they listed four um, important meanings of what they felt
Christmas was. The first one that I encountered was, may the Christmas season bring only happiness and joy to you and your family. We wish that. That sounds good. Another source said, no, it's the uh, meaning of Christmas is the gift of love. But they didn't go on to explain what that gift of love was. A third said, wishing you a season full of light and laughter for you and your family. Now we ought to laugh. We ought to enjoy our family. But so far they haven't hit it, have they? One source said, best wishes for a joyous Christmas filled with love, happiness, and prosperity. Now that right there is an oxymoron. If you can get through Christmas and be prosper, you're better than me. <laughs> happiness. Joy, love, light, laughter, prosperity. But they haven't hit it. As a matter of fact, they're not even close. The mess message for Christmas. Someone said, may the Christmas bring you much joy and happiness. And may your new year be merry and bright. Sounds good. But we're not hitting it. Have you caught that yet? It's, it's about, uh, as far as we're looking here, it's about me and you. They went on to the inspirational Christmas quotes. Just remember the true spirit of Christmas lies in your heart. And someone said Christmas isn't a season. Someone said Christmas is a state of mind. Christmas is a time of kindling the fire of hospitality. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of these are, are very, very close. But I, I wanted to find out what the Bible said. Notice none of these, none, not one, says anything about Christ. Listen. Christ is Christmas. Christ is the meaning of Christmas. If there were no Christ, there would be no Christmas. If there would be no Christ, there would be no Savior. If there would be no Christ, there would be no Messiah. If there would be no Messiah, then we wouldn't have a snowball's chance and a radar range of going to heaven. If we did not have a Messiah, we would be hapless, helpless, and hopeless. Hey, it's all about Jesus. Amen. Let's prove it. We just read Matthew 123. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name, here it is, Emmanuel, being interpreted God with us. A 13 or 14 year old maiden may in fact have given us the Messiah. Well, there's no doubt about it. 
It says it here in the book of Matthew. But 700 years before Messiah, it was prophesied in the Old Testament, in Isaiah and other books of the Bible, that a Messiah was coming, and this Messiah would be the Savior of the world, and he would deliver the Jew, and he would bring salvation to the Gentiles. You're either tonight a Jew or a Gentile. If you're a Jew, you're the promised seed. If you're a Gentile, you're grafted in. The first Gentile was a Roman officer. He had heard all about the Messiah. And he wanted to have an apostle come. And that apostle was about a day's journey away in the house of Simon the Tanner. And he was on the roof praying. And God said, what I have said is clean, is clean. And about that time, they're knocking on the door, and he comes down from the roof and goes in to the city with these soldiers. And they find a, a Gentile that has already received Christ as his personal Savior. And it threw this disciple, John, in a twirl. He wanted to say, wait a minute, only the Jew. But he couldn't because on the rooftop, God said, hey, got news for you. You go in. They're coming. And you'll find a man. And he's not a Jew. And he has received me as his personal Savior. And you want to know what that was? God with us. And God is still with us. That's what Christmas says. God with us. If we don't have God, we don't have Christmas. If we leave God out, we've not celebrated Christmas. I drive along and see Snoopy in the yards, and there's nothing wrong with that for the children. And I see spaceships, and I see deer, and all kinds of stuff. But you want to know what? That, I'm sorry, I'm not an old Scrooge, but that's not Christmas. That's a fabrication of the minds of a people that do not know the Lord as their personal Savior. So they celebrate by putting Snoopy in the yard. Nothing to do with Christ Mass. It's God with us. And I looked a little farther in Matthew chapter 2 and verses 1 and 2, and I read this. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, what they say? Where is he that is born king of the Jews? That's important. King of the Jews. For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. They came to worship the king of the Jews. And they were pagan. They came to worship and follow the star of Bethlehem that led them 
to Bethlehem. Why? Because they wanted to worship him. That's why we come to church on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day to worship him. That's Christmas. God with us to worship him. And they came 900 miles. And you can't get people to come one mile to worship Jesus. Further, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they had saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. God said, I'm going to hang a star and it's going to show the place where my son is born. Who is he? God with us. We're going to worship him. And when this young child would be born, he would not be just another child. He would be the son of God born of a virgin. That's special. And the world wants to take away the nativity scene. It bothers them. They don't want to be reminded that God is with us and we who are Christians want to worship him and it bothers them they can take away every nativity scene but I had it written down and I can read it and I can praise God and I can worship him. You can take away all of the structures, but you can't take away the word of God that's hid in your heart. That's what God said. Take the word. Hide it in your heart because they will come and strip you of the word and everything that looks spiritual and anything that applies to Christ. Put it in your heart because God will be with you and you can worship him in your heart. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Great joy. At Christmas time, there ought to be great joy. It's not just another birthday. We worship him. He's God with us. It ought to give us exceeding great joy. Matthew 2.11 Are we understanding yet a little bit about what Christmas is? Matthew 2.11 And when they were come into the house they saw the young child with Mary his mother and they fell down and worshipped him there it is again. They didn't strut in and say, we're important. They came in and they fell.
bow down. These are not Jews. They fell down and worship him. And when they had obeyed or opened their treasures, they presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, the best that they have. As I said last night, we ought to give God the best that we have, not a remnant. God deserves our best. And they traveled 900 miles and fell down and worshipped him and presented him with gifts. You say, preacher, you got me there? I just don't have any gifts. You've got you. That's what he wants. He wants you. He doesn't necessarily want your money or your talent. He wants you to worship Him. Oh, if we could get tonight an understanding of what it means to worship Him, oh, it would change us completely. Worship Him. Luke 2, 1 through 5. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Things have not changed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone, into his own city. By the way, there again, there again, is a Gentile taxing the Jew. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, and to Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was the house and lineage of David. Of David. That's the tribe of Judah. We think of the Lamb of God that was tortured and beaten, but we will see him as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And the world will be judged. There's going to be a change made, beloved. You won't want any part, if you're lost, of the lion of the tribe of Judah. And that was Joseph. Joseph could trace his lineage all the way back to be taxed with his espoused wife being great with child. God has a line, a lineage, a family. You can get in that family. You say, wait a minute, preacher, I'm not so sure, I'm not a Jew. You can get in the family. You can get in the family. You can become a son of God. Do you hear that? If you're lost, you can become a son of God. And I draw your attention to the last part of that. There was no room for them in the end. 
Doesn't that break your heart? We read this and we don't think that they've traveled 93.6 or three-tenths of a mile. She's great with child ready to deliver. Joseph goes in and says, I need a room. And they say, buddy, you're out of luck. We don't have any rooms. But my wife, my wife is going to have a baby. Well, I suggest you take her out and find a stable or something. That's what the world does with Jesus. They put him in a stable. Listen, one of these days, he's going to descend from the Mount of Olives. He's going to walk down through where he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's going to walk up that other side of that valley. He's going to walk through the graves of Arabs that buried their dead there thinking that if the Messiah ever came, he would not trample on their graves. And he's going up to a gate that is sealed and he's going to open that gate he's going to walk through because that is the gate of the priest he's the high priest there's no priest like the high priest there's no high like the most I, if anyone ever deserved to walk through that gate, it's my Savior. He's going to reign for a thousand years. You want to know something? He'll sit on the throne. He will not put his head down in a stable. He will rule from that little three acre plot known as the Temple Mount where the Arabs have built the Dome of the Rock. In 2000, I walked in the Dome of the Rock. You walk in on carpet. There's carpet on the walls. And there's this big, smooth rock. You gotta be dumber than a rock to worship a rock. God help them. But the Lord will reign on his mount for a thousand years. And there'll be room for him. Luke 2, verses 8 through 14. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Notice now, which shall be 
to all people. You say, well, wait a minute, preacher. Not all people will understand and have this joy. I know that. But everyone could. Amen. Great joy which shall be to all people. Why? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. Born in the city of David, Bethlehem, house of bread. How fitting. How fitting. For he is the bread of life. But not everyone will understand that and receive him. But just in case, this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God! in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be something if there was peace on earth? Yeah. When they were trying to end the Korean War, they made sure that they found tables that were round so no one would appear to be sitting at the head of the table trying to negotiate peace on earth. If I check my history book there's still a demilitarized zone. The North Koreans and the South Koreans. We have thousands of American sailors, Marines, Air Force, Army stationed in South Korea. We still look over the demilitarized zone. They still look over at us. They're still, still, technically, no true peace. But that's the way it is in the world. There's no true peace. Someone, somewhere, hates someone. It's in a revival. And a lady came up to me and she said, would you visit my husband and his father? They will not talk to each other and haven't for years. I said, ma'am, where do they live? Well, we live right there, she pointed across from the church and 50 feet was the father's house no peace no peace and the devil doesn't care where there's peace between millions or two he just wants you to not be at peace but Jesus came that there would be peace on earth and goodwill toward all men. But all men will not be at peace. Luke 2, 15, 16. 
And it came to pass that the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. That the Lord had made known unto us. The Lord, the baby Jesus. You say, well, God is Lord. Sure he is. But because of the birth of Jesus, they said, the Lord. Let's go see the Lord. And they did. And they did. They went seeking to find Jesus. When you're lost and you need to be saved, you need to come and seek the Lord. Amen. You say, preacher, if it was that easy, I'd done it years ago. Why didn't you? If it's that easy, I'll just turn it back around. If you want the Lord, come and find Him. The shepherds did. The wise men did. Christmas is about Jesus. Say it with me. Jesus. 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 Oh. What a name. What a name. We have a time that we can rejoice in Jesus. Amen. We can do it every day. But this is a time and the world will look at us and we can show them what's important. We don't have to wait three hours in a wet rain with an umbrella or a tent to get in to buy a toy or a game or a tool. Mark asked me several years ago to purchase something at Lowe's. And I said, what is it? And he told me. And I said, all right, I'll get up, but I won't get up too early. And I'll go over to Lowe's. And, you know, we thought, buddy, they'll go as fast as you can pour them out of the store. And I got out of the car when they opened and I walked in and I said to one of the workers at Lowe's, I want to know if you've got any of this particular tool left. He said about 500 of them back in the back. He said, but people have been pouring in here thinking that they wouldn't get this tool. Christmas Eve will be in church. I guarantee you that there will be room for you. If you can't sit out here, 
you can sit up here. If you can't sit here or here, we've got the ability to show you the service in other rooms. We'll open that lobby. I guarantee you there'll be room for those that want to worship Jesus. Amen. It's all about Jesus. Amen. Amen. We go through such a hectic pace. Slow down. Slow down. And just say, Jesus. That's the reason. Love and presents and tinsel and trees and ornaments and gifts and It's an amazing thing. They say 50 to 55, 60% of the gifts you get, you take back on Monday. Why? We're never satisfied. It's about Jesus. Is it about Jesus? Let's stand. Heads bowed and Eyes closed for a moment. Lord, I pray that I preach the message of Jesus. And we've talked about Christmas. And Father, if there's one here tonight that is lost, like the wise men, like the shepherds, they need to come to Jesus. They won't have to come 900 miles. They will not have to come 20 miles. They can come with less than 50 feet. Whoa. There's someone lost. I pray they'd come to Jesus. In your sweet name we pray. Amen.